the icons of real estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week with your host, Tomas Fonseca, and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. So welcome to another episode of the Icons of Real Estate podcast, where we spotlight industry leaders. I'm your host, Karen Roberts, and today we're thrilled to welcome Jenny Utz with 18 years in the field. Jenny is a real estate investor, consultant, and advisor who has built a remarkable portfolio, including a brokerage, property management company, and remodeling business. So her diverse investments from multifamily units to international short-term rentals reflect her expertise and passion for creating financial freedom and a legacy for her children. Jenny has received numerous accolades, including Realtor Magazine's 30 Under 30 and Business of the Year from Maryland Chamber of Commerce. So please join me in welcoming the incredible Jenny Utz. Thank you and welcome to the show, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So everybody always wants to hear your story, your backstory. So what inspired you to start your journey in real estate? And what are what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced in the early years? Sure. So early on, I had just graduated college. I actually wound up getting pregnant with my son. And so I knew that I needed to figure out something where, you know, in real estate, you start, you think you've got freedom and flexibility and the opportunity for, you know, financial freedom through real estate. And so that's where I chose to dive in. Of course, when I started, I had about one good year before the market crashed. <laughs> so the, the good thing is, though, it taught me how to work hard. Uh, I had a goal. I wanted to learn how to invest in real estate. That was my true passion. Uh, but not coming from money and being young, having a young child, needing to make ends meet, I needed to figure out a way to do that. And so a lot of times, you know, real estate is a transactional treadmill, right? We are constantly making ourselves work harder, do more in order to get more business because we are only good as the last transaction we had. So what I did is, you know, we've got three options. We just work more so we can sell more. We create a team. I did that. Or start your own brokerage. And I did all of those things. And I was still looking for more. I, I didn't want as much responsibility. I didn't want all of those things, but I wanted more financial freedom. That's where I decided to get into real estate investing. And obviously not coming from money and being young, I needed to find different ways to make that happen. And so for me, mm -hmm. the first opportunity I had was house hacking. I bought my first property that I lived in. I lived there for two years. And then instead of selling that house when I was ready to move, I actually kept it as my first rental and bought my next property with as a primary residence. So I had a lower down payment, a lower interest rate. And so I started my investment portfolio through a different method than others might have, but it worked for me. And it was something that was able to get me started. And then from there, I was able to leverage each property that I had for larger investments. Ah, sounds like a very sound plan. If only more people did that. <laughs> and I think a lot of people get put off because they think, oh, I'm too young to do this. But there you go. Inspiration for many that you can start at any age. So can you share any kind of specific investment or project that really was the, you know, that shaped your career as it were, or shaped your maybe approach to real estate and what lessons did you learn from it? Sure. So I'll, I'll do a generic. I, I did house hacking actually for a couple properties. And the crazy thing is, is I always say when I'm doing my investment coaching is it's start small 
think big. So many people think they need to come out of the gate and hit a home run on their first deal. Yes, it needs to financially make sense, but it doesn't need to be a home run. That first deal should really be one to prove to yourself that you can do it uh, because that's the biggest hurdle a lot of people are facing is fear of failure and not sure they're making the right move. And then two, what that looks like to build from there. So my first several were just house hacks. I was only making a couple hundred dollars a month in passive income. So, you know, I was making passive income, but nothing, no, no grand slam here. But what I wasn't realizing, and I mean, I knew it and and anybody in real estate knows it, but what the compounding effect of real estate investments. So the multiple properties that I had at that point over the years, I was then able to refinance them out and pull out close to a million dollars in cash. And let's talk about the compounding effect of what then I was able to do with just those properties that I started with. And that really is where it opened up my door that, you know, it. I never say that real estate is a get rich quick. It takes time, but it builds drastically the momentum. So with that money, that's where I was able to then do my international properties, uh, some Airbnbs, out-of-state investing, multifamily, get me into fix and flips, and just a little bit of everything. But it opened the door, and that was all without me having to put massive amounts of my own money down. It was from a refinance of properties that were already paying for themselves through rental income. Brilliant. So what I'm hearing from you is about got to be strategic with your approach and you've got to be intentional behind every transaction. Yes. So with your experience in both domestic and international markets, well, how do you identify emerging opportunities in real estate? Uh, I, I'm a big believer in relationships. My international properties is from my connections in that area. Uh, here I have got connections. So I also have that property management company and I have got connections nationally for them along with, I actually merged my real estate brokerage into EXP, which is a national company. So I've got now connections a little bit of everywhere. And for me, it's been huge, the relationships. Uh, when you approach a deal as a relationship instead of a transaction, you're going to win every time. I've gotten more off-market investment opportunities from that very reason. Uh, I had a, a gentleman who was actually the father of a girl I went to high school with. And he called me and he said, Jenny, he's like, I've got a property. He said, I want you to take care of this. I want you to buy it. You're the only person I want to buy it. I trust you. I know you'll get it done right. And at the time I had other projects going on. I didn't want to get into another project at the time. And we just went back and forth of what was important to him and what I needed. And he had just lost his wife and he didn't, and the property that he was working on was about 10% done. He didn't want to deal with these other investors going in and out and picking uh, what they wanted him to fix. He had just lost his wife and he just wanted out of the property. So his goal was to immediately be out, not have to go back and forth in negotiation. And I had money out uh, on other projects. So I didn't want to have to put my own money out. Uh, treating it like a relationship, we, we were able to work through that. And I bought it within a week as is, and he seller financed the entire deal. You know, so everything is relational. In my opinion, we can make numbers work as long as each person is finding uh, a win in what they want. So um, all my properties, the properties that I'm dealing with, I've got uh, a coaching client who wants to buy in Washington State, and I've got connections that I'm able to work with them there. So it's just been really great, the relationships. And I think that's the biggest strategic thing that any potential investor should do. Oh, 100%. I suppose so many people, as you just said, is if you're going to be just fixating on the numbers, yeah. but on the long term... It's more about building strong relationships yes. because you don't know what's going to come back from that in the future. Right. So what advice would you give to aspiring investors looking to build a diverse real estate portfolio like yours? Uh, the, the the biggest thing is, like I said, it's it's a calculated risk. There's so many people who don't get started because all they think of is risk. They don't hear that calculated part. And real estate investing is a lot of numbers. 
it's not like your residential where you're buying your your primary residence and you're loving the kitchen and you're saying, oh, I can see my child growing up in that backyard and we've got the swing set. It's not that. So we're removing all of the emotion out of it. And so it becomes calculated where we're working on numbers, analyzing the deal. And as long as it financially makes sense and also knowing when to walk away when it doesn't make sense. I'm a big, I love um, competitive, so it is hard for me to walk away because I want to win. But the way you need to look at it is you are winning because you're not losing on a bad deal. So it's all about mm. the numbers. Mm, there you go. Oh, fantastic insights, Jenny. Thank you. So give the listeners a little bit of, you know, ooh, how's it been going? I mean, a lot of people that we speak to, you know, the last year or so, has been slightly different. But in Jenny's world, how has it been? How many transactions did you, or what was your production like last year? So the best part is, is I sell off-market properties now because of my relationships. So I, I've got the benefit of not working straight off the MLS. And that's really nice because I'm not competing with every other investor who's looking mm. for the same properties. And so whether it's my properties or me helping other clients find properties, it's all done once again through relationships and off-market properties through other property management companies. Mm, right. Cool. And so what what so now you're doing that? What what what's next for Jenny? What what are your goals for next year? So what I'm really excited about doing is I've launched um a new section of my coaching platform where I am helping real estate agents get into real estate investing, help them get off that transactional treadmill. And so many people in real estate are struggling or frustrated. And to show them the opportunity that they can have income passively where their expenses are being paid and then they're working in real estate because they enjoy it and because they actually actually want to help people, it, you're coming from a much different spot. And a lot of real estate agents struggle to ask for help of what that looks like because they're in real estate. They should know <laughs> how to buy real estate. But I always like to equate it to the same thing as, you know, we're residential agents. You wouldn't go and buy or you wouldn't go and sell a 20,000 square feet commercial building just because you're an agent. It's completely different. You would be taking classes and you would understand what that looks like in the market and the players in that game before you got involved in that. You'd have a mentor. And so that's what I'm doing on the residential investing side. Yes, you know how to do a contract. Yes, you know how to buy and sell and help others. But I'm helping real estate agents transition their knowledge to what that looks like to invest on their own. Brilliant. And it sounds like it's the next logical step. Yes. So and it helps um, with this market, when you're in this market and things are a little weird and you've got that steady income coming in, it's a game changer to have a few different fingers in different pies right but yes. still within the same industry yes so um well we've come to the end so our final question is always the same because <laughs> here at the icons of real estate podcast we are the number one real estate podcast network and we are passionate about making podcasting accessible for all for well for anybody in the real estate business so if you had your own podcast, what would you call it? Okay, since I just turned 40 and we're getting a little older, my name for my podcast would be Laugh Lines and Life Lessons. Oh, I love that. Fantastic. <laughs> well, maybe we should try and make that happen. That's brilliant. <laughs> Jenny, thank you so much for your time today. You. It's been uh, great tips there for investors and to the listeners. I will be back next time with the Icons of Real Estate podcast. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.